In the previous episode of this two-part series, it has been revealed that during the imprisonment of the Romanovs in Yekaterinburg, some of the guards held friendly attitudes towards the family, after witnessing with their own eyes the unaffected kindness, and the natural simplicity of the family members. However, most of the guards, were truly deeply poisoned with the revolutionary zeal of the time, and used every opportunity to display it. The commandant of the Apotiev house, was a 30-year-old man, Alexander Avdeyev, who lived in a world of boasting and wine. He used very harsh language, and gave great performances of Bolshevik zeal. Avdeyev displayed his harsh vocabulary at every opportunity. One of the guards at the Apotiev house remarked. Avdeyev was a drunkard. He loved drinking, and drank all the time. He talked about the Tsar with malice. He cursed him in any way he could, called him bloody and bloodthirsty. The main thing he cursed him for, was the war. He believed that the Tsar wanted this war, and for three years he spilled the blood of the workers, and that masses of these workers were shot in this war. Anatoly Yakimov, another guard at the Apotiev house, relates the following. It is a shame to admit it, but all of us, to the last man, we were more or less guilty as to those unfortunates. It was difficult for these young boorish peasants, elevated to this role of guards, to stop themselves, if only in their heads, from the temptation to satisfy their animal instincts. They made fun of the defenseless girls. Our comrades from the factory later became more humane, but Zlokozov's young studs stayed as vicious as before. They would keep on continually offending those young girls, and watched their every move. I often pitied those girls. For example, if they were playing music on the piano, they smiled, but tears from their eyes dropped onto the keys. The girls found it very difficult to understand and to adapt to this new atmosphere. Their narrower surroundings from the time they were born until then, had always consisted of officers and soldiers of the Imperial Guard. It was very natural for them to approach these men, and to begin conversations with them. Moreover, even in the period of their captivity, up until then, especially in Tobolsk, their relationship with their guards was fairly good. Their surprise was great when they tried to approach the soldiers at the Apotiev house. Andrei Strakotin, a guard at the Apotiev house, characteristically relates. The prisoners constantly tried to start conversations with the Red Guards. One time, during the time of walk in the garden, the Tsar approached me quietly and said, Tell me, is Yekaterinburg a big city? Like Moscow, I responded, and having tossed the rifle up on the belt, I walked away. The most eager to talk were the daughters, except Olga. They would often start a conversation like this. 
We are bored. It was Maria in Tobolsk. Can you guess what this little dog's name is? They always brought dogs outside with them, which lived with them. One time, when they approached the Red Guard Nicholas Stepanovich with this type of talk, he responded roughly, there is no need to distract me, you can just stomp along. They looked at each other fearfully, and continued walking along the path silently. The indoor upstairs post, where the prisoners lived, was especially difficult. There, almost every minute, the prisoners walked by the guard post, and the daughters especially would smile at the guard every time, and start a conversation. They would stop at the post, and it was all very repulsive and annoying. I stood at that post only once, and declined after that. In another instance, as Nicholas sat at the table with his daughters, Avdeyev drunk as usual, elbowed him in his face. Yakimov commented on the incident. It's better that Alexandra Fyodorovna did not see this shame. Her husband and daughters felt that they needed to hide from her the truth of what happened. One of the servants of the family, Terenti Chey Mojarov, who followed the family in captivity and was held in the Apotiev house with them, became seriously ill. This led to his replacement by a footman, Alexei Troop, which saved Che Mojarov's life, thus preserving details about the life of the prisoners at the Apotiev house. In his descriptions, he characterized the soldiers who guarded the family as follows. They were completely dissolute and rude, without any barriers, with lit cigars in their teeth, and their shameful comportment. They breathed disgust and revulsion. When members of the family passed next to the guards, they would rattle their weapons to frighten them. Some of the guards devoted their time of service to drawing and writing on the walls of the hallways and bathrooms, whatever was most shameful. A favorite theme of their vulgar drawings was to make shameful depictions of the Empress with Rasputin. Even though the guards wrote and drew these pictures where it was impossible for the prisoners not to see them, they found it especially pleasing to ask the girls if they had seen them. The worst annoyances of this sort were mainly by the guards who stood in the halls outside the bathroom. Chemodurov explained. When one of the girls went to the bathroom, the guard began to amuse himself by asking where she was going and why. When the girl went inside, the guard turned toward the door of the bathroom and waited until the girl came out. Anatoly Yakimov confirmed the truth of these events. Remembering these sorrowful events, as Speransky writes, he confessed with an undisguised confusion that he and his companions had allowed themselves the lowest and the most unhealthy curiosity when they stood guard at the door of the bedroom of the Grand Duchesses, or near to the family boudoir. One day, Grand Duchess Tatiana, pale as death, gave them a look so rude that they were ashamed. They turned on their heels and did not continue their attempts at insolent debauchery. Valentin Speransky, relates that according to the witness of the interviews, the most shocking erotic language was carried into the Apotiev house, by means of improper graffiti on the walls of the hallways, on the garden walls, and on the poles of the garden swing. Once, Grand Duchess Maria silenced two of the crudest persecutors, when she said boldly, glaring at them. How can you stomach repeating these shameful words? Do you think that it is with such words that a well-bred woman can be moved and think kindly of you? Be polite and decent people. Then we can talk with you. The texts of these videos are taken from the book The Romanov Royal Martyrs What Silence Could Not Conceal, which is an impressive 512-page book based strictly on primary sources, offering previously unpublished texts. The book also features more than 200 black and white photographs, and a 56-page full-color photo insert, of more than 80 high-quality images. Order now your copy, at www.romanovs.eu.